one big difference for me this summer will be I found an opportunity to invite some of my New York students to join us at a certain point during the day, it's over two days, um, and to engage in dialogue with um, this summer's students in, in Germany. And um, because of what's going on um, in, in, in the United States and then the world around questions of racial justice and police brutality, it seemed that it would be almost wrong not to make that one of the central focuses of this year's class. And so the, the students in Loifana will be reading um, short pieces by a number of major American, African, African American black writers. And um, when they have dialogues with the American students, it will be sharing, sharing views and perspectives on perhaps how the United States situation is seen from Europe and vice versa, how Americans may think of race. Looking at the idea of whether a lot of people often make statements about, 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 um, about the meaning of race in, in Europe and, and in the United States as if it's very comparable, but I think contrasts are important too. But it's a very interesting question to be asking right now since the social, you know, the protest uh, movement that started so um, dramatically in the United States in uh, early June in response to the killing of George Floyd seems to have sparked similar similar movements in Europe, right? So I'm not a political. I'm really talking a lot. <laughs> I'm not a. Uh, I'm not a political theorist, and this isn't even particular. You know, to study race and even African American culture is not my specialty. But I think it, at the moment it's inter intersecting very much with questions that people are having about how white people, particularly of European background, are, are, are involved and implicated in, in the questions that are coming up. And also um, thematically and philosophically, the questions about identity and relations between groups of people and the perception of difference and similarity between groups is very much um, a part of what I study when I'm looking at literature and film. And more and more students, I think, sort of look at things that way. We're living in a world that requires sort of mastery of more than one body of information. And um, interest, I, you know, I, I don't know if it's still true, but for a long time, graduates of our program did extremely well uh, with job placement. I mean, a student who has an individualized study program like ours often graduates from university with really strong writing skills. Uh, you know, because you're, you're, you're encouraged to pull together resources from different, different forms of discourse and find some unifying way of talking about them for yourself. So you have to think hard about how others write and then find your own voice. My name is Karen Hornick and I ha I'm a doctor of philosophy and I've, been, I, I've studied um, English and Western European literature and for 20 years or so I've taught in the Gallatin um, School at New York University in Lower Manhattan. Um, I teach classes in modern, uh, modern uh, narrative culture. I study stories and how they've been told, mostly in written form, but in, also in film and television. And a big theme for me is thinking about how those texts, those stories, those narratives um, convey ideas to readers and watchers about the state of the world in which they live.